All right. My name is Sunny Ann Ball. I come to you from my bedroom from north of Toronto, Ontario, Canada, to talk about the topic of disclosure, to reveal or expose hidden and unexpected information. Of course, in this case, MRKH, hidden, unexpected, yes. I did not know that I was born without a uterus or a vagina until I was 20. So it was hidden from even me for 20 years of my life. So if it's hidden from me, it's definitely hidden from the world. So at 20, I met the dilemma of to tell or not to tell, what to tell, who to tell, what not to tell, whatever it is, it's definitely a journey. It's an individual one. I know people who have told everyone the day they're diagnosed. It might be a little exaggerated. I know people who have told no one their whole lives or two people have known. So super individual, no recipe, absolutely no right or wrong way of doing this. I'm going to speak from my journey with disclosure and I have to start with gradual. Gradual, gradual, gradual. I cannot repeat this word enough. This has been my biggest friend throughout this. A gradual amount of information being told and the people being told. So I gradually built up who I told. So my mom and I were the only ones who knew because we were the only ones in the doctor's office when we found out. Then, you know, maybe boyfriends knew, people who needed to know, close family members. And along the way to now, I've written a book waiting for it to be published. Let the world know, every stranger on the street, hello, my name is Sunny, is the same as saying, hello, I have MRKH. It's really become that easy for me, but it definitely did not start out that way. So gradually got to a place of being comfortable with it. Gradual information being released. When I got diagnosed at seven years old with one kidney, right? I had practice. Excuse me, can I get to the washroom? I only have one kidney. You know, little kid, Sunny. I got practice saying that. Then more information. I have no uterus either, right? No uterus, that's like stepping up to the edge of the cliff. <sighs> A little scarier. And then, you know, I wasn't born with a vagina. That always felt like launching off a cliff, never to be able to return. Now, it's definitely changed to no vagina. Mic drop. Then there's three main things that have helped me or now looking back helped me and that's from coming from a place of strength when telling being comfortable with people's reactions and being confident and accepting of who I am and my body and myself so these do not go in order it is not like one day you wake up and you're like oh my gosh I'm so comfortable in the body I was given. Now I'm ready to tell people. Nope. That did not go that way for me. It's more like these are wrapped up together. So let's talk place of strength. To start, we're gonna have to go to place of weakness. Eruption of tears, let's say, in midst of anxiety attack, lying on the floor strewn, it's basically mess. <laughs> this is not easy for the person telling the information and it is not easy for the receiver, let me tell you. 
It is like there's too much information coming at them and they're in snippets and they're ricocheting off their face and the shock and, uh, and they don't know what to, right? It's like uterus, no vagina, no period. Ah! And they're just dealing with the brokenness that is in front of them. There's no space for them to deal with their own reaction or there's no order. And then their pity or way of comforting almost compounds the situation and then you get more mad. That, that would be a place of weakness. A very, very important, by the way, step on my disclosure, disclosure journey because, well, I don't know if I would know a place of strength without the place of weakness. So fantastic steps to make, not easy. Uh, going to a place of strength feels more, when you're telling it, it's more like education. You're providing information for someone. It's a little more ordered, right? It's here is something that exists in the world. You probably haven't heard of it, but here it is and I happen to have it. Oh, they're free to take the information in and respond as they would. Now, they're often honored to receive this information. It's like you're giving them a gift. I, the best response I got once was, you have changed the way I see the world. It's good enough for me. That goes along with being comfortable with people's reactions. Whoo, that's a tough one. Let me tell you, you are not going to get the reaction that you want, ever. I mean, people are either not gonna react enough, they're gonna say weird, offensive, inappropriate thing that then you have to respond to, oh. Right, I used to tell people they'd come back with something that I found horrifying and I would, <laughs> I'd laugh it off at the time, oh, ha, 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 right? And then like go cry an hour later, depending on how suppressed I was. Maybe it was a month later. Cause each response is like an individual snowflake, right? I tell a guy or uh, I've told someone, Oh, you know, I found out when I was 20 that I didn't have a vagina. Oh my, how do you, how do you pee? Well, I just told you I found out at 20, so you think we would have known. Or, you know, you have one hole for two things. We have two for two separate things. How do you respond? Uh, you know, you can't practice on responding back to people's reactions, but we have to remember that people's reactions are from their world that they are living with, within. It's not from what you've said, it's a response to what you said, sure, but it has nothing to do with you. It's coming from their bubble of perception and that's why it's not offensive. You give them some information and they jump back with something, Hmm, interesting, and that's another chance to educate. I actually have fun telling people I have MRKH. If you ever told me 10 years ago that I would have fun disclosing MRKH to people, I would have laughed in your face. And it is like providing a gift. I've come to think of it that way. So, I also know that I can't control what they do with that gift after I've given it to them, right? I used to disclose MRKH from that place of weakness and it was so bad. I, the next morning I'd wake up and be like, oh, and I'd want to flee the country. And I, I, gen I generally did. Now, when I tell someone I don't want to leave the country and I generally stay in the conversation that I'm having it and meet, help meet the person where they are and it's kind of a give or take. I tell them mine. They tell me, share a story. And then they off they go with the information I've handed them. I never really think about the aftermath anymore because I'm so comfortable in giving it out. Uh, yeah. 
so. Why have I told? I get often asked, like, why do you even have to tell anyone? Why bother? For me, this goes with the being confident and accepting within myself. It's been one and the same. So uh, slowly disclosing to people has helped me to get outside myself. It was hugely, what I was dealing with was more within here. And once I released it more, I realized it wasn't a big deal to other people that bugged me at first, but I realized it was something that I was dealing with more so. It, when people accept you and what you're telling them, they're grateful for you sharing more of yourself. People just ended up loving me more. I, I tell because I was sick of the little lies. I was sick of, MRKH was a really rough time for a while, and even the simple thing is someone asking me, oh, how are you doing? If I said, oh, good, fine, fine, I was lying through my teeth. I was not fine. I was depressed, anxious, whatever I was experiencing for uh, years on and off, and once I started talking about it, it helped me mirror how I wanted to handle it. People loved me. So then I could love myself. And that's it. Thank you. Please enjoy.